Hello and welcome to a 3v3 cast. Starting off we have Max Power on the contested VP side of the map playing as that force commander in mid. We have Forest Radio playing as the mech boy in the center of the map and finally for the blue team we have Ace of Swords playing as the Farseer on the contested power side of the map. Moving on to the red team, we have Aguxus playing as the Ravna Alpha here, going to be up against Max Power on the contested VP side. Best noob in the center of the map, playing as the Plague Champion, going to be up against Forest Radio in the center. And finally, Morgan MLG Man, also known as Adeptus Nubus, playing as the Tech Marine here against Ace of Swords. And already a little bit of action here between the Mech Boy. Taking quite a lot of damage here from the CSM, going to teleport very aggressively here, going to try and force Melee onto that CSM squad. Now allow his double slugs to actually get into Melee combat without taking any range damage whatsoever. But with double heretics here and Doom Blast available, these sluggers will still get kited around here. One heretic squad already backing out of the fight here, going to leave a single heretic squad to fight both squads at the same time. On the slugger squad already forced off here and the Doom Blast preventing these sluggers from being able to tie up those CSM in Melee combat. The CSM will be able to pick up multiple models at the cost of some heretics. Meanwhile, Gux is going to go in very aggressively here. These tactical space marines with melee resistance able to actually stand up a little bit against these homogons since they are quite fragile units. These double termogons are a little bit too close though. Going to try and force down melee and see these tactical marines on retreat to try and get a model, but going to be unsuccessful there. We'll be able to get a scout model and now the force commander is going to try and kill as many models as he can with that bolt pistol and chainsword combination. Old Pistol doing 16 DPS and the Gux is here doing some very nice trickery here. Going around in circles so the Force Commander is sometimes unable to actually do his melee attack and dodging the special there as well. The Force Commander gonna get forced off here and the Gux is saving himself some model losses by trying to stop that Force Commander from being able to attack and by dodging that special there. Meanwhile, up in the top side of the map, Best Noob going to be coming in for a flank here against Ace of Swords. No melee units on retreat here for Ace, so the chance of him wiping any units is a bit low. But CSM might be able to take down a model or two here with the Plague Champion, but the Plague Champion and CSM are not even going to focus any models whatsoever. And the Guardian Weapons team is already on the scene to actually defend the reposition point and power. Going to be forcing Best Noob off, but with the Grenade Launcher IST, two Grenade Launcher IST, in fact, in the area here. Grenade Barrage could allow Best Noob and Morgan and G-Man to actually push forward. Skadi Weapons team though going in a little bit aggressively here. Cracking rounds are used here against the Skadi Weapons team. The Shuriken ca Cannon itself is actually heavy infantry so those cracking rounds do bonus damage if the Tactical Marines do focus down the cannon instead of the other models in the area. Meanwhile Max with some ASM now out on the field here. You need to be careful when fighting against the Homogons with the ASM going to be used to try and tie up those Termogons there. And with their jump, the Toxin Sack's not going to be able to use the Crippling Poison against the ASM. It's going to be a bit ineffective if the ASM can just constantly jump on top of them. Shotgun Blast onto the Banshees here, only catching out a couple of models. Farsia also getting caught out by that Shotgun Blast as well. At the same time, Best Noob is going to come in from behind here against the Aves of Swords, but there's plenty of room on the top side of this map to actually maneuver around and some ASM going to be jumping in. The Banshees retreating away before they get knocked over. If they were to get knocked over, they may have gone down a Blight Grenade here on retreat as well, going to be catching out those Banshees. Blight Grenades do quite a bit of damage on retreat, or well, not quite a bit of damage, but they definitely do hurt on retreat. Definitely don't want to get caught out in them you know, retreating, especially when you can spread the poison all around the army here. Now these Dire Avengers are going to be taking a little bit of damage there from it. Plague Champion going to be pushing in, the ASM going to be interrupting that Guardian Weapons team here. And Morgan and Best Noob together will be able to finish off this power farm. Meanwhile, Aguxus getting doubled here as Forest Radio decides to come in. Out towards the bottom here, going to be losing a Warrior Squad here. These double sluggers with double burners on the tree going to be too much for those Warriors to handle. The two models which have burners doing power melee, more effective against heavy infantry which is those warriors and the entire generator farm is going to go down here. Arguably this is a bigger loss here for red team compared to blue team since blue team only had one generator here. Meanwhile red team had multiple generators and at the same time Aguxus losing his warriors makes this trade more favorable for blue team. The ace is going to hold his own here. In fact generators are getting replaced almost immediately. The power node was not killed so the generators could get placed down straight away here. And Forest with double sluggers here on the retreat path, although not going to be able to do too much. Blight Grenade and Grey Barrage on retreat here. The 
Black Grenade does land, could be doing quite a lot of damage to these slugs, but the ASM and jumping in, preventing the throw of that Black Grenade is now a bit too late to actually use it, and will miss Forest's army completely there. And the ASM that will be backing away, Max arming his Force Commander with a Power Sword here, going to be doing bonus damage against Heavy Infantry, and also improving the Force Commander's Battle Cry to a 15% damage boost instead of a 10% damage boost. And Max also retreating the remainder of his units here as the Guxus decides to push in against the central power node and to be tearing that down. And at the same time, Adeptus is also in the scene with his Mastercrafted Bolts are going to be very useful at stopping these Banshees from being able to tie up his units in melee combat by suppressing one of the units with a high powered shot, slowing the Banshees down to nothing temporarily so that he can get as much range damage on them as possible so that when the Banshees do get into melee combat, the ASM can easily fend them off. Meanwhile, Gux is pushing in here with his Termagants, both upgraded with the Toxin Sack, so they can actually do an extra 55 or 45% increased damage. Meanwhile, some Burrow Traps getting placed down here as well for Gux. The Ravenant Alpha is able to instantly place down these Burrow Traps. Very annoying to actually fight against Fortune onto that Guardian Weapons team here. The Guardian Weapons team is not the one getting focused down. The Fortune may have been better used here on the Banshee so they can brawl a little bit better against these ASMs. In fact, the Banshee is getting a very low here. It looks like they'll be able to get away. That guy, oh no, the Banshees are going to go down here. ASM will lose a model here, but the Banshee loss is going to be quite big here for Ace of Swords. And Shotgun Scout's going to be pushing in a little bit further. An ally's forces are under attack. Double Slug is going to be coming in for a power bash once again. Agux is asking for help here in the chat from Best Snoop, since he is getting doubled quite a bit here. These Double Slugs are able to burn down the generator farm so quickly here. The entire generator farm is going to be unsavable at this point. But Best Snoop is coming in from behind, so Forrest might be forced off here a little bit early. The Grenade Barrage is going to knock them over. Might be able to save that one generator. So the Grenade Barrages are timed differently, so it does knock back twice rather than just once in one big blob. Along with a Blight Grenade here, Retreat. This could be a dead Slugger Squad here. A lot of range damage coming in. One Slugger Squad is definitely dead. For some reason, they're stopped moving as well. That could be a dead second squad as well, and that's a large loss there for Forrest as he is now down to just a single Shooter Boy squad and his commander as well. That flank being extremely painful here. Meanwhile, Ace of Swords is going to be pushing against Red Team's natural generator farm here on the red side, on the right hand side, sorry. We'll be able to get at least one generator here, could even go for a second one, but Adeptus is coming back in on the scene here. Shotgun scouts on the left, ASM coming in from the right, a drop pod coming in as well, going to be full of tactical marines. Base going to be putting a guardian weapons team inside this building, and Adept is not having much to really counter other than the high powered shot and the grenade, but it's not going to be enough to force off that guardian weapons team completely. These tactical marines behind the green cover here of this drop pod are going to be able to not get suppressed because of how far away that guarded weapons team is and very nicely done here for Guxus to get this Kapuri tower here and spawn some spawn mines to actually clear that guarded weapons team outside the building and you can see Ace trying to desperately kill it in time not going to be able to do it but landing a special here against the spawn mines going to prevent them from being able to tie up that guarded weapons team the mech boy here though for forest radio going to be going in a little bit aggressively here the fast here with fortune on herself will be able to get away the mech boy also going to be able to escape here and she's getting hit with that high powered shot here and ASM going to try and take down a couple of models here on retreat. Dire Avengers do remain on the scene here with the Guardian Weapons team inside of this building. Meanwhile, on this left hand side, a Shrine of Nurgle has gone up here. These ASM walking a bit weirdly there. And also, Cannon is also set up, but with this Shrine, with it getting worshipped, the healing is going to be absolutely insane here. You can see the healing on all these units. And at the same time, Aguxis and Best are going to be able to reinforce at the same time from that Shrine. Another Burrow Trap onto the VP here, very annoying for Max to really deal with. Does have some detection with his scouts here though. So you can always find those Burrow Traps grenade. Going to be taken out for Heretic models. The others going to be armed with the grenade launchers. No Heretics with auto rifles since it is split 4-4. Shotgun Scout's going to go in for a very aggressive grenade throw. Another Capillary Tower going to go down here. It looks like... Ace is going to be forced off, is going to lose this Guardian Weapons team I believe, the Tactical Marines force melee here with the Kraken rounds activated, they might be able to kill it, 
but the tactical ring is going to be a little bit too slow trying to gain position. ASM going to be jumping here on a treat, 77 health here, and it will go down. The ASM jump is going to secure the kill here, but there is a gate that has gone down here for Ace, so you can come in for a flank whenever he wants to. ASM getting the sergeant here, the force commander, with that thunder hammer. And with all these units blobbed up here, the force commander is going to be able to knock all of them down at the same time. And the CSM going to be upgrading to the Markham Zinch upgrade, giving them more effectiveness against heavy infantry forests. Still with only a shooter boy squad has actually decided to tech to tier 3. Interesting to see what he is going to rush. Could rush for a looted tank, given that he is the mech boy and can support vehicles quite well and can repair with the mech boy. But we will see at the same time Ace of Swords going to be bashing the power here. Blue team going to be remaining very passively. In fact, there's going to be some commandos here. Or well, Forest probably going to do some sneaky caps towards the mid side of the map. Two Jerry's has already gone down here. The Melter onto that Dreadnought. ASM with a Melter bomb coming in here. And the Dreadnought with the multi Melter could be enough to take down this Falcon. Going to force melee here. And the ASM going to be fighting the Banshees. This Falcon is definitely going to go down here. The Banshees going to be able to escape here. These Banshees are new since the Banshees, or the initial Banshees here for Ace did go down. But engagement is actually going down here for some reason. Max decides to engage, but Forrest not on him, so actually help right now. Max is going to be against two people by himself here. Ravner though with that Corrosive Devour might be able to take down that Whirlwind. It is so low right now. One more salvo from that. Ravner will be able to do it, but Commando's on the scene. Red team now knowing that Forrest is tier 3, gone for that tier 3 rush. 293 VPs to 322 here, the multi mounted of Dread fairly uncontested right now. Ace losing the Falcon and with Banshees with a heavy melee Exarch, that is the only source of AV for him right now. It is getting a Guardian Weapons team, most likely going to upgrade to a Bright Lance Weapons team so that he can actually counter that multi melter and fully upgrade the scouts. Actually going to go down here to the Mech Boy. Quite a big loss there since those scouts were worth 55 power with all the upgrades combined. Understood. And again, the gates gained used here by Ace. The wind walk ability from the Farseer giving a speed boost to units and also shrouding them as well for a short time when exiting or when you have units surrounding your gates here. And that mastercrafted bolts are suppressing those banshees, delaying them from getting into melee combat. And at the same time, it gucks this on the scene here with warriors and homogons. But Fortune on the Banshees is going to prevent any kind of model loss whatsoever here for Ace. Commander's Tier 3 Detector able to actually detect that there is this Burrow Trap onto the VP here. The Commandos are running out of energy, not having enough energy for their Burner Bomb. The OP they've set up here and the Commandos giving vision, Max will be able to fire away freely. But choosing to fire at the Ravna Alpha should maybe choose to fire at these Chaos Space Marines, most likely going to be able to get some model losses there. Going to be unable to actually kill that Ravner since he is a bit too tanky. He wants to try and focus on something a bit more blobby. The Whirlwind did live overall, and the ASM is going to be engaging here. But that Shrine is suppressing them as well. Force Commander is engaging with that Thunder Hammer, and Commandos are firing away as well. These ASMs getting a little bit outmatched here. These Homogons coming in. Warriors also jumping into the fight. The Zone Throat trying to do what he can here. Commandos untouched so far in this engagement, and the also kind of is allowed to reset up here. Force Commander though going to be tying up those CSM here. They are very split apart right now, down to just three out of four models reinforcing on the field. The aspiring champion remains alive. Commandos are backing away here, going to get detected though by these warriors, and Homogons and warriors going to be switching focus now to these commandos. We got Deptus going to be trading Jerry's of farms here. With Ace by the looks of it, as both players are on each other's natural generator farm here. The multi melted dreadnought able to actually take down the generator farm fairly quickly. ASM going to be forcing off those warriors and homogons as well. But Commando is with a model loss here, and there are some knobs out now as well for Forest. Could see the super tough beam for the mech boy to give these knobs 75% damage resistance. There's quite an expensive tier 3 war gear at 50 power, I believe, and knobs themselves are quite expensive in terms of upgrades. And you've got the minion and green of the huge hammers and the knob leader, making knobs cost a total of 200 power, plus an extra 50, I believe, for that super tough beam. It's a lot of massive power investment to get all those upgrades together. But this melted dreadnought is going to struggle here. I'm able to even tie up this Bright Lance weapons team on retreat here. Lessons of the Omnizire are used with the Farsi, with the Doombringer, and with Guide onto the Banshees. 
making that drone not take an extra 40% damage, and the Banshees doing an extra 30% damage themselves with that guide. The Dreadnought does barely get away there with the ASM and jumping in to knock back those Banshees and actually save that Dreadnought. Once again, they're going to be firing away here. Commando is going to be pushing forward, but the ASM is going to be jumping onto the also Cannon squad. Luckily, ASM do have a bit of knockback immunity after they jump, otherwise, they would have got knocked over by their friendly. Love to Daka there. Also, can the squad no retreating away whatsoever, and the ASM going to get a sink kill there. Also, that also can the squad and the Gux. This is going to be flowing through now onto this left hand side. Homoguns desperately trying to fight these ASM here with the full command with the Thunder Hammer and these ASM though on the scene, but these ASM definitely going to lose a model here. The Force Commander with the special is actually going to save these ASM from any model loss whatsoever for now. I'm going to allow the Homoguns to get four stuff. We will lose one model, but it would have been better. Compared to if they did not, if the Force Commander did not get that special, because they would have definitely lost a few more. But Nom's currently unupgraded for the most part here. Don't have their huge hammers yet. Do have that Nom leader though for that extra health. A Pain Boy is coming out, and the Super Tough Beam is also purchased for the Mech Boy as well, providing a 75% damage resistance and immune to knockback and suppression. These Noms are going to be nigh unkillable while Super Tough Beam is activated and with the Pain Boy coming out the Cyborg Implants upgrade is going to get purchased most likely for these knobs and I think it's going to be either I think that is going to go for the extra speed here you can see the Cyborg Implant equipment is getting purchased to heal onto the knobs just to try and get them out of base a bit quicker here the extra speed on the knobs is plus one speed with the Cyborg Implants and can be arguably the strongest upgrade plus one speed is insane and the knobs are going to get upgraded right now, but I can't actually tell what upgrade it's going to be. It doesn't actually tell me. But like I said, I do think that it's going to be the extra speed here. And yeah, look at that speed. These knobs are definitely faster than standard. The plus one speed just helps them get into melee combat all that quicker. And the super tough beam having so much damage resistance, these knobs are going to be so difficult to actually deal with. Best new as a plague champion should consider getting the plague fist so they can actually stun these knobs when they use their frenzy or when they have the super tough beam on them. This stun is needed to actually control them at the moment. And our commander is going to get detected here. Some more fully upgraded scouts here for Adeptus. Did lose his previous fully upgraded ones earlier. And is going to get a new set of burner bomb getting thrown down here. But unable to do too much damage here. The commandos are getting so low right now. Meanwhile, Pain Boy and the knobs with a super tough beam adept is going to get forced right off altogether. These knobs should also be upgraded with the huge hammers whenever they get enough chance or when the forest does get enough power. But the knobs going to be pushing in forward. These knobs are actually moving around quite quickly here. Not really taking much damage either, and Huge Hammer's upgrade is coming in as well, giving them increased damage per swing here. These knobs are going to be tying up the CSM here, just get source gain used from the Pain Boy onto the knobs to actually heal them up. And the CSM losing the Aspiring Champion there, first model. Some Warriors and Homogons are going to come in here, but these knobs are still remaining in the fight. They still have the Frenzy ability available here. The Rock's are going to go down here, going to catch out. Part of the Gux is his army here, CSM are very low here, but able to reinforce just in time here. I'm not actually sure what they're reinforcing from though. Oh, they're reinforcing from the Swarm Lord here of the Guxus. But Nob's going to get full stuff here. No super tough beam and no frenzy available for them, and they will get full stuff. They are level 2 as well, so when they turn level 4 and they have about 6,000 health, or I think about 5,000 health actually, it will be absolutely insane. Even Terminate is reinforcing from the Swarm Lord. Aguxus' army is so strong right now with the Swarm Lord leading the charge here and Blue Team are getting very low on VPs at the moment here, down to just 65 compared to Red Team who are currently on 308. And that Swarm Lord is going to provide so much map control here, the Whirlwind is going to be doing a lot of work here against the Swarm Lord or against all the units surrounding the Swarm Lord here. But the Swarm Lord itself is going to be such a pain to actually deal with. This one is 2000 HP of vehicle armor and can also drain the life of surrounding enemy units as well to heal itself up if it gets a bit too far into enemy territory. On the red team, on the red side, a res resurrection onto the tech marine is going to go down here. Tactical marine is currently unupgraded with nothing whatsoever. 
no sergeant or anything like that. Meanwhile, this Swarm Lord, surrounded by an army of Tyrannus, is going to be moving around here. The Swarm Lord does provide a speed boost to all units in the area here. You can see the little smoke trails behind all these units to show that they are going slightly faster than usual. Nobs back at our base once again here, but the Nobs aren't exactly full health yet. They are on 300 or 3000 HP here. And we'll have to be careful with this engagement here, but Nobs taking a bit of damage here. That zone throw, but the psychic damage is going to be very effective here against the heavy infantry of Nobs. But the super tough beam is activated here. Doom onto the Swarm Lord here. The Swarm Lord will start healing itself fairly soon though. If Guxus is paying attention, but these knobs are doing so much damage to it, it might not even be able to outheal the damage here. Knobs still on five models here, now using their frenzy as well. Their hammers are fully, we've got the full momentum on these hammers here. The Swarm Lord is unable to outheal, and the healing has now stopped. The Swarm Lord is definitely going to go down here. Burn a bomb onto the rest of Guxus's army as well. This time is going to get away with five HP. Knobs going to be able to finish off the Swarm Lord as well here, but the crippling poison is not going to be enough, and the Swarm Lord will go down here, and the knobs are still on. Fairly healthy here, going to be fighting the vanguards, getting special there as well against Depths' vanguard veterans. Going to be able to get a couple of models here, the vanguards not jumping out of combat, trying to walk away, and it looks like Call the Boys was just used here as well. Nobs now back up to 5 out of 5 models. Well, 4 out of 5 models do have one model almost ready to go here. Mark target gain used here onto these knobs here, making them take an extra 40% damage, extremely similar to the Doom ability from the Farseer. In fact, it's identical to the Farseer's ability since it just makes the target take an extra 40% damage here. The Ravna Alpha retreating away very low himself, 37 or 36 points here for Blue Team. Things getting a little bit too close here for them. They were able to take down the Swarm Lord and were able to have a really nice engagement, but the VPs still tick lower and lower for them by each second. At 30 DPs right now. Blue team now on a 2 to 1 cap, or soon to be a 2 to 1 cap here. They still have a lot of work to go given the VP deficit of 246 VPs. You can see a Wailing Doom here on Tree is going to miss though. Is going to catch out a couple of heretics here, going to be able to kill one heretic model. If it was slightly to the left there, that would have been a quite painful death for Best Noob. A Land Raider Redeemer here for max power on this left hand side, going to allow Blue Team to actually hold this VP for quite a while. Meanwhile, Ace is going to go in for a push towards the natural VP here of Red Team, but there is a Land Raider Redeemer waiting there for Red Team. Going to make this push here with the Avatar quite difficult to actually pull off. Max going to go in a little bit aggressively here, going to be jumping in with that Force Commander. Another Swarm Lord is set to build, and Orbs of Bombardment is going to go down here. He's going to catch out his own Force Commander here, but the Bowser Cry activated. He just walks right out of there. ASM definitely going to get caught out there. Actually going to jump over the Orbs of Beams here. And so many of the Guxus' units are low right now. The Force Commander should be able to finish off at least one squad here on retreat, but going to be unable to actually do so. Meanwhile, at the natural VP here, an Eldritch onto that Land Raid Redeemer here. Super tough beam onto these knobs once again. Going to be tying up these tactical marines. These tactical marines should really consider getting two plasma guns each just so they can actually fight these knobs. They are heavy infantry. You want that plasma damage to actually tie them, or not tie them up, but to actually destroy them. And the Plague Champion really needs a Plague Fist to keep these knobs under control. Without it, there is nothing to tie them up. They are immune to suppression with that super tough beam, immune to suppression again with the frenzy activated here. But they still are, they're still not immune to the stun of that plague fist. The frag assault coming in, they're going to be knocking them onto their feet. Tyrannic formation going to be going down here. Grenades also thrown, the grenades are going to miss and the knobs going to get spread around here. But our Land Raider Redeemer is still the target here for these knobs. The Avatar is also coming in as well, there's just a lot of heavy melee damage. The Avatar himself doing 240 heavy melee damage per swing there. And this Land Raider Redeemer is going to go down here just about. And Nobs will be able to escape there with 4 out of 5 models. But the Swarm Lord is back out onto the field here. And Ace is getting forced off here. The Commandos with the love to Daka are going to be knocking over those Warriors and Homogons. The Nobs will be able to live there. Level 3 and a half though. Soon to be level 4. And currently, when they are full health, they do have 4,800. When they have, when they are level four, I believe it's 5,500. Double looser tanks as well for for forest. These double looser tanks will easily be able to kite around. And Colter's speed is activated. Look how quick this whirlwind is driving in and out of combat here. I don't know why it's driving into combat. 
but Guxus is forced off here. Best new remains on the field as Swarmlord is healing from the units of max power here. That Swarmlord is taking a lot of damage. Terminator is going to get called in. Probably Assault Terminators, I would have thought. And it's going to be Assault Terminators. That Swarmlord is going to go down again. And the Looter Tanks are just going to carry on kiting around everything and absolutely everything. These Chaos Terminators teleporting in very aggressively here with an auto cannon. Not the best source of AV. And Terminators are going to be coming in here and finishing them off. These Terminators, or Chaos Terminators, try to force melee here onto the Looter Tanks, but these. Chaos Terminators, or just range Terminators in general, only do 35 um, heavy melee damage per hit with their Power Fist, I believe it's 35, not making them the most effective to use to force melee, especially when you cannot retreat away with them. Tier 3 Lictor though, for Gux is going to try and capture this VP here, but Max is already on the scene here with some scouts and with the Force Commander. Going to try and force that Lictor away, but decides to actually jump up and actually dodges the battle cry hit from that Force Commander and will be able to retreat away. And with all these looter tanks in the area, going to make it very difficult for any fights to go up. Nobs coming in once again with the healing from that Pain Boy and with that super tough beam here. The double plasma guns have been purchased, and Time Field is going to get used here to actually shut down Best Noob's army here. And these tactical marines going to run all the way back to base, gain four stuff here as these knobs gain so much momentum from each swing hitting those tactical marines. You can see the orange circles, they can have three orange circles each for an increase in how much damage is increased for an increase in 8%, doing 37 heavy melee. Increase that by 8% with each swing, so a total of 24%. And also consider that these knobs are leveled as well, so they are doing more damage anyway because of their leveling. 20 DPs to 109 here. ASM yeah, so going to be jumping in aggressively here onto Best Doom's arm. Going to try and tie up these Mark of Zinch Chaos Space Marines. Going to use the Merciless Strike, but going to miss those CSM. Only going to catch out the Plague Champion here. Lightning Claw Terminator is going to be unable to do anything as there is a third Swarm Lord out on the field here. Guxus just seems to have the Swarm Lord on Overwatch at this point with each loss a new one starting to build. Cult of Speed getting used once again. Looter tanks all lining up here for a shot and that Swarm Lord is going to get forced up very quickly here as it sees the three Looter tanks and realizes it cannot do anything against that. And the Land Raider Redeemer moving around fairly quickly here because of that Cult of Speed. The tier 3 Lictor though, going to try and go in for a very aggressive cap onto the natural here of blue team but getting detected here by some dire avengers with the whirlwind firing away here he is going to get knocked over followed up with a knockback on that grenade in fact the tier 3 lictor could go in for the snipe against the whirlwind it does do heavy melee and for now it remains hidden as the force commander decides to try and search for it the tier 3 lictor able to actually infiltrate without costing any energy whatsoever just means he cannot regen energy while doing so, the knobs though taking quite a lot of damage here, they are level 4 for a total of 5,550 HP with full momentum here, warriors barely are able to escape here in fact a nuke onto the triple looter tanks here but this nuke only doing heavy melee, not the most effective against vehicles, is effective against vehicles but not as effective as say compared to an Eldritch Storm on top of it and the VPs do tick down here and blue team going to be able to barely win here the game with 20 VPs they did have quite the deficit earlier on by 250 VPs they were down but they're going to be able to come back in here Forrest with his rush to tier 3 here for these knobs and then following it up with triple looted tanks here but these knobs with the cyborg implants for that plus one movement speed the super tough beam from the mech boy and the frenzy and full upgrades on these knobs going to make them very difficult to kill and allow them to level up so quickly